They're eating, but my better self tells me I should probably go in. Check this out, dude. So, that sucks, but uh, I learned something, so it's all good. But I, I should probably go in. <laughs> So hay rigs are the craze right now. There's a lot of discussion about them, a lot of different views and opinions. I toss them and what I've tried to do is I've tried to figure out a way to use them in Florida because there's not too many opportunities to toss them and we don't have the style of lakes, I guess you'd call it, to apply them as much as they do a little further north. Even in like north central and north Florida, it's more of a viable tool to targeting fish. One thing that I found that's kind of cool, we have a lot of natural bowl lakes, especially in central Florida. And those lakes are pretty clear and they have large populations of bait fish. Not always shad, but sometimes glass minnows, which are these very, very tiny, tiny, almost transparent or translucent minnows. And the, when the fish are targeting those, they're really hard to catch. Um, a lot of the applications, a lot of the tools you're going to be using in those situations are drop shot rigs so with real tiny, like straight tail style worms. You're going to be tossing flukes that are pretty transparent and things along those lines. So you pretty much finesse kind of like one hook approach, maybe twitch baits as well, but you're kind of limited in what you can do to catch them. I'm of the opinion that in those kinds of lakes, there's a lot of suspended fish that simply forage around focusing on bait. And in those situations, it's going to be glass minnows. So I've been trying to play with creating a finesse A rig to apply to those situations, those natural Florida bowl lakes where there isn't much structure, but there's seemingly deeper water and suspended fish. And I've had some success. I'm not always on them, but I've been able to hit like one school on every outing and get three or four bites out of it as well as catching like a four to maybe five, five and change pound fish, like a, a solid fish for those clear water lakes. And I'm not targeting brush piles. These are simply suspended fish. I might be somewhat structure fishing, but I'm targeting suspended fish. That's the big key. So what I threw together, and it's kind of cool, um, gamblers come out with some new products that have kind of helped, and the craze with A-Rigs has sort of created a wide diversity of A-Rigs, so there's a lot of different ways to tweak them in a lot of different applications. Let me show you what I'm using in the video. What I did is I took a Picasso, I believe it's the Finesse Schoolie Rig, and I paired it up with Gambler's new swim bait jig head, it's these guys right here, these little heads. I'm using the smaller 5 16s head. It's got the smaller hook on it as well. And what I've done to mimic those glass minnows, and that's been the biggest trick, I'm using teasies as well as little easies, the new style swim bait from Gambler. Um, I'm using them in a ghost shad color. It's got a touch of blue, a little bit of gold glitter, but they're centrally, they're transparent. You can see right through them. And this is the rig. I'm doing it with blades for the most part because I want to mimic as many little bait fish as possible because we're talking like little guys, just real tiny, tiny bait fish. And I'm throwing it on 17 pound or 20 pound fluorocarbon. The rod that I'm using is kind of unique as well. I'm not using your normal flip and stick style rod. I'm using a Powell Endurance. Um, it's the 725, it's my frog rod actually. It's a little shorter rod than you normally use for tossing air eggs, but what I'm wanting to do is sometimes throw it around docks and that, and that shorter rod makes the, the bait a lot more manageable for tossing it when I'm aiming at a specific target or a specific corner. So that's kind of my setup. Um, 
let me talk about how to target and a few little tricks you can do. One little trick that I've found, and it's a trick to getting bigger bites. As you can see right here, I have teasies rigged up on one side. On the other side though, I have little easies. And what I've found is by mixing the size of the swim baits, you can trigger some bigger bites. I mean, I'm gonna get bit if I go with all teasies. I haven't had much luck when I go with all little easies, but if you mix the size of the baits between three and four inch swim baits on it, um, you tend to trigger some bigger strikes. And I don't know if that's because the, the fish will target those bigger bait because it's a smarter energy expenditure, or I don't know. All I know is that it works, and that's all that matters when it comes down to it. The other trick that I found too is you really have to use your graph. Um, the fish that I've found have been in a couple different contexts. Either they've been suspended over nasty kind of like scum grass that's on the bottom, but they'll be three or four feet up, so you want to like tick the top of the grass, almost like fishing a trap. Well, the other thing I've found is that you just have to cover gigantic flats and you'll go without a bite for a very long period of time, but you just have to have faith and at some point you hit that school. But keeping an eye on your graph, what you'll notice and what'll key you into to solid flats, you don't have to so much see arcs on the graph that are fish, but rather you're looking for just small scattered bait clouds. Um, on these lakes, they don't look like shad balls. It's not nearly as defined. What you're gonna see is more like a small little etching. Like it's gonna be like these little, little tiny lines. They're not gonna be that big. They're gonna be kind of small and they're also gonna be a little more sparse than what you would see if it was a, a school of shad. It's gonna be a little more spread out. But I've just been casting this thing as far as I can get it. I do a nice kind of slow roll retrieve. Depending on the depth of water I'm in, I'm gonna let this girl sink down a little bit. But it's pretty sweet. And I know they haven't been seeing it because they're crushing it. And I'm able to fish stuff that guys wouldn't normally be able to cover with such efficiency, quickness, and as thoroughly. Just because it's a heavier bait, but I'm throwing it on the fluorocarbon so I'm getting a little more finesse presentation. But I'm doing it in these gin clear lakes where oftentimes you're throwing like little micro spins, you're gonna throw drop shots, you're fishing slower pretty much. This allows you to cover a lot of water. Um, it looks just like the bait balls of those glass minnows that are swimming around. And you're not gonna catch a bunch of fish, just know that. Like you don't go out there, you're not gonna catch a million. Every once in a while you'll get into a big school and you'll be able to hit them pretty hard. But really with this thing, it's a Picasso finesse rig, finesse A rig, and then the, the gambler jig heads, the new the swim bait jig heads, and then the easies and the little easies. You're not really fishing for a bunch of bites, but you're gonna hit that one school that, that's really gonna pay out and it's gonna make your limit. And the best part is you're gonna get that bigger fish. But you gotta stick with it, and you gotta have faith. It's not a quick fix. But give it a try, guys. Um, you can see kind of how I'm fishing in the video. In the vid, it's, uh, it's more of a grass presentation where I'm, I'm throwing to suspended grass lines or fish suspended over um, submerging grass. But it's something you can do on giant flats. It's something you can do on offshore humps. And I'm not saying structure humps. I'm saying sand humps. You know, just, just some kind of bottom contour change that defines things. But give it a try. It, it's a cool, different approach to fishing some of those clear water central Florida and north Florida lakes that... Um, that really kind of matches the hatch and allows you to cover a lot more water.